What is going on my fellow gamers? Welcome, welcome back to the game here. Welcome back to the channel, and we're here to just do an update, and just have a little bit of fun, because we haven't done one of these things in a while, or ever really, as a tier list. Okay, I need my glasses. Sorry, you're gonna get a glare. I apologize, but we're gonna have some fun with this. Um, so what I wanted to do is, we've done 64 games, I just finished Kingdom Come Deliverance, and we're not gonna do that one just yet, but I think I still want to do this like every 10 games, update this list. Just to get an idea of what is going to be next and what we, what can we do next. Because next. Um, hope quarantine's treating everybody well. I finished one game at the start of another one. And starting today, you're going to start getting two videos a day. So this should be the second video coming out this evening. Or on the 30th. So, awesome. Um, other than that, music wise, I'm kind of in a creative drought. So we'll eventually get back to that. But, we'll just get into it. So, S... Basically, almost a perfect game. A, almost perfect couple flaws. B, above average. C's at, well, in this case, B will probably be average. A's above average. S is, like, fantastic. C's below average. F is just awful. And let's face it, we've hit a couple of these. There's 64 games on this list. So I expect there some be all over the place. So, the first game we ever played was Fear 1. And we're listening to Fear soundtracks right now, just because we have an idea what's going on. Fear was a really good, clunky first-person shooter, you ask me. It was pretty solid for the most part. It had those jump scares that you need, and it was just very solid from the grounds up, you know. Especially during the time, which I think is like 2006, 2007. However, its sequel, which we did second, was Fear 2. Fear 2 was a pretty decent first person shooter, but when your name is Fear, you expect to get jump scared a lot, you know? And it became more of a Call of Duty clone, you know? So it was a pretty average game for the most part, just not as solid as I would want it, you know? Could be a whole lot better, could be a whole lot worse. But with that being said, the third thing we actually did was not Fear 3. Or Fear 3. It was actually Resident Evil Code Veronica X. And to me, this was like one of the better Resident Evil games, especially at the time, where it had these clunky controls. But it was still a very solid game. You had those jump scares, you had everything you were looking for for a Resident Evil game. Before they switched to 4, we went to Resident Evil 4, which we don't talk about. Or we will talk about. It's a different story. Um, well, we'll go, for, but. The classic Resident Evil, probably one of the best classic Resident Evils there is. Then we went to Fear 3, and Fear 3 was a mess. I look so happy forward to this, because I remember when I heard Fear 3 coming out, that I'm going to let's play it. I'm going to start a let's play career and start doing Fear games, you know? I want to start the horror games. And Fear 3 wasn't that good. It just had like a really just bad ending. The gameplay was weird. It was just not... It wasn't that good of a game, you know? And it was just kind of disappointing. What was Project 5? I don't remember! Let's look at it. 5 was... Oh, uh, Fear Files was 5. And then 6, I think, is the VR missions. Alright. I love Metal Gear Solid. Metal Gear Solid is my favorite franchise of all time. I remember when I did Metal Gear Solid 1 original, which was Project 7, the original 7, but I took it down because I got too many copyright claims on it, which sucked. But 7, uh, VR Missions was a really good game. Excuse me, it's not really much of a story, but it was just more like, hey, you're playing getting the concept of Metal Gear Solid before we send you out there to actually do the mission. It's a prequel to, you know, but... It's... Basically just for a fun little thing. Pretty average for the most part. Nothing too spectacular. Freak, I don't remember half of these games I've done like, in order. Record City, okay. Now, if you know me, I have some unpopular opinions. Operation Record City got destroyed in reviews. Like... Like, look, let's go over this real quick. You know, we'll use Wikipedia for a reference. Fives, fours, and a 7.5 somewhere. A lot of threes, fours, pretty, like. 
I thought Raccoon City was a really good third-person shooter. I don't think it was, like, a great Resident Evil game, because whatever this is the best Resident Evil game I've probably ever done was Red Veronica X. You know? We'll get to 4 in a second, and I'll explain the logic. But for the most part, pretty solid game. Didn't really have the jump scares I was looking for for a Resident Evil game, but it was still pretty solid, you know? Uh, 8 was Mortal Kombat 11. I hate fighting games. I've always been bad at them, and... You know, but I like Mortal Kombat, you know. Especially I hate Shao Kong and Nude Sabot. I remember. You remember? But I've played a lot of Mortal Kombat games in my life, and I feel like this one was actually better than most. But then again, I don't have much, I mean, say. So I'm going to put it in the B category with everything else, you know. Pretty average for the most part. Uh, now with Splatterhouse. I enjoyed Splatterhouse. Splatterhouse was a very fun beat em up, very gory, very what you were expecting it from from the get go. Um, the only couple I can remember was pretty short, right? 15 videos, yeah, that was pretty short when we were doing 20 parts, a uh, uh, 20 minute video part, so. I liked it. We'll put it up there a little bit. You probably wonder what 10 was. Minecraft. There are three series that I've ever done that always drove me nuts. And Minecraft was always one of them. Because I'd never figured out why people like it. I still don't get why people like it. I tried to get into it and played it. There's three video series that I ever had that actually had really good views for no reason. And this is one of them. And I couldn't figure it out. But. Minecraft is not my cup of tea. I didn't really have a good time. I've always said I was going to do season 2. No, god no, I'm not ever going to do season 2. It's pretty below average on my part for a game. Sorry. One moment. Alright, here's the music that we're going into the 11th. Which 11 was, what's your dragoon? One of the most underrated JRPGs, in my opinion. Fantastic soundtrack, fantastic gameplay, great story. What else could you ask for for a game? You know, it holds up even well today. Graphics don't necessarily is a big factor to me. Probably the first s rank game we've ever played. After Roger Dragoon was what? Resident Evil 4? Alright! RE4! Let me explain what my fear about RE4. Resident Evil 4 is one of the best games ever made. I will say that. It is not a good Resident Evil game. I remember when 4 first came out back in 2005, 2004. I don't quite remember. I was a, I was a kid. I think 14 or 15. And we got it. And it was a very... Like, I remember there was a couple things that scared the crap out of me. No other chainsaw guys, but that was it. There's not really much jump scares, not much of anything. But it was a really solid game. I'm gonna put it back in the A rank. Just but if it had more scares like a Resident Evil should, it'd be up here. After Resident Evil 4 with the Transformer War for Cybertron. One of the most random games I ever did was the Transformer series, War and Fall of Cybertron. For War, I was a big fan of the game series. Um, really good third person shooter, multiplayer was really fun. I mean, it was a very solid game all around. Just, there's something that was very annoying about it, like every game does. So, we're putting it down there. Jericho! We beat, I beat this game in one city when we had a crisis here in West Virginia. Um... Jericho, I've always had a love hate relationship with. It's a very solid game. Has a creepy atmosphere. But, very clunky. Very just not that good. And short. So, for the most part, it's a pretty subpar game. The other game we did that I did during that time was The Darkness. Is that next? Yeah. Oh, God. 
So the darkness is right over here. I can't find it. There it is. Um, very fun comic book shooter. Pretty short, just like Jericho. We have beat it in one sitting as well. Record everything. Uh, really, no major complaints about it. Very solid game. And we need. I will do the second one one day. It's on my list. All right, we change songs. I'll be right back. All right. I don't remember, so I We're going to do that for a little bit here. Because the next game on our list is a game that I absolutely hate. The first Let's Rage ever, Afro Samurai. Look, no. Awful game, awful gameplay, very frustrating. I don't know how they even thought of making a second one. They did release a second one, and then immediately withdrew it, which was weird. I've never seen that before. Never want to see this game ever again. I don't even know what my disc is for it. I think I burned it. Rage 1! I absolutely love Rage 1. Rage 1 was a very salt, great first person, or first person, third person experience. The only problem I had was on the hardest difficulty, it was pretty easy still. And the ending was just so abrupt. But very good. I'm a huge fan of it. It hit me excited for the second one. We'll talk about the second one when we get to it. After Rage was Fall of Cybertron. Fall of Cybertron was not as good as War of Cybertron. Or War for Cybertron. Plus, we never got a finishing conclusion to that story. Because the ending kind of was just abrupt like the other one. Pretty average. Most sequels aren't as good as the prequel, because that's just a common reoccurrence. But, you know, pretty solid for the most part. Parasite Eve. Hey, we're talking about Parasite Eve. Very classic uh, horror RPG, action RPG back in the 90s. I wanted to do the second and third one for a while. I forget it's the third one. Uh, for the most part, very solid. No complaints whatsoever. Not even a letter. We have a long way to go. I, uh, 20 was Condemned. The biggest problem with Condemned... It was so clunky. For an early 360, well, it was a 360 uh, launch title, which was awesome at the time. But it's, I mean, really good game, really solid, a lot of good jump scares. You know what? We'll put it up a day. Really good spot for it. All right, let's watch music. I'll be right back. Alright, we just did Condemned, we're gonna go into Dishonored, another stealth game. I was disappointed Dishonored. Very shallow story, even though your actions do make a difference in the scenery, which is awesome. Did it take long to beat? Like, how many videos I did in Dishonored? 21? I mean, that's pretty average, but... Just... I wasn't a big fan of it. But it was a pretty solid game overall, you know? All right, the other game I get confused about why it did so well is Dragon Ball Z Connect. A, I'm glad I did this because this actually helped me get my channel on the map, and I appreciate everybody who came from Dragon Ball Z Connect. It was a very awkward experience playing the game, especially since I've never used a Connect immersion control before. It was the first time ever, and it was a little weird. For the most part, I had fun doing the fun little like. Uh, 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 you know that kind of stuff. I love three Dragon Ball Z games. They're all going to be on three different categories. For the most part, is this was the best of them. Win back. God bless Win back. Win back was a blessing of a game back in the early two thousands. You know, story was fun. Was the inventor of the cover system. A lot of games took place after that, you know, like Mugger Solid, Gears of War, with its cover systems. I'm glad I got revenge on this game because I never beat it. And at the same time, I wish I didn't play it because it's a pretty horrible game, but very frustrating. But it's below average of a game overall. It's really not that good as much as I wish I could say it was. So we can put it to C. Uh, Budokai 3HD. 
pretty solid fighting game. I'm horrible at fighting games, as you know already, because we talked about Mortal Kombat 11. I feel like it's below Connect because I have more fun with Connect. You know, it's easier to learn to connect, but for the most part, you know, it's pretty fun. New Super Mario Bros. U. I hate platforming. Good, we got that out of the way. For the most part, though, it's a fun Mario game. What else do you expect, you know? Pretty average game. But, as you see right now, we're very skewed towards the middle, to high, upper middle, you know? We only have one S rank. No so worry, we'll fix that. We'll fix that. One A rank. I want to, we'll get some more below average shortly, because look how many games we still have left. Let's go ahead and get switch songs, and I'll meet you right back. Oh, I love this song. It's one of my favorite songs of all time in a game. Obviously, it's Man with Machine or a Guinness name. Alright, if you know me, my second favorite game of all time is Final Fantasy VIII. To me, it is my favorite Final Fantasy. It's very fun, relaxing to play, not really stressful at all. No, no choice but an S rank here for me. Oh, I love this song so much. I don't know, Ratchet Clank Deadlock, we have another. Deadlock was a fun arena shooter. Like, I wanted an arena game for a while, and for the most part, Deadlock got what I wanted. It was very solid, good story, with the universe well, you know. We'll put it right in the middle. Deadly Premonition! Remember how I said we were going to do S-Rank games? I love Deadly Premonition. I can't wait for the sequel. You don't understand. I have been hoping for that for a long time. I love that game. Very quirky, very fun. For the most part, it is a pretty bad overall game, but it's so much fun. You know what? Perfect, that's what I wanted. All right, guys, it's time. All right. 29 Metroid Prime Revenge. That's probably was a little clunky compared to the sequels, you know, but overall, really fun little game. Okay. But for the most part, very solid game. Had a weird uh, difficulty curve towards the middle and the end. I remember that part. 30! XCOM Enemy Unknown. Alright, guys, you have a 90% chance of shooting in the face. What do you do? You miss. I love strategy games, but XCOM is a weird one for me because of how inconsistent just accuracy is. You know? You lose one guy, you can lose the entire story. You know? Which is cool that there's a game over feature if you get things happen too far. For the most part, pretty average game. I can't complain about that at all. Fable the The other the three games I don't understand what gave me a lot of views. I hate Fable the Journey. Like there's a lot of things about this game that just drove me nuts that shouldn't have existed. I, I don't even want to talk about it. Like, kinetic controls were awful. Who wants to ride on a horse and buggy the whole time? You know, there's a lot of things I just couldn't stand. Going Commando. I didn't really care for Going Commando as much as Deadlock. I remember that part. But another point for the majority of it, I'm not wasn't the biggest fan, so it's a little bit below average in my opinion. I just love this song. Zombies ain't my neighbors. You want a fun, quirky 2D shooter with a weird game over setting? This is your game. The RNG factor is the only one I have with it, but for the most part, very solid game.
Alright, XCOM the, the Brave. It's not that good of a game. Like, it's a, it was an okay third person shooter, but it didn't really explain anything to you. So, it's gonna go to the C rank. Silent Hill Downpour was a weird one because for a game that's supposed to be amazing, it really wasn't. Did you do it again? Yep. Sweet. Uh, what part this button? What does this do? Oh god, no. Oh god, no. It was a pretty average game overall, though. I ain't got doing that. Zombie you, Zombie you. I had so much hope for. And the fact is, for Zombie you is we fit. Um, I mean, overall, I thought it was a pretty decent experience, but there were so many complaints I had with it. Especially the ending. If you die at the ending, you have to restart the entire game. No. Below average, in my opinion. Red Dead Redemption 1 is one of the first games I ever 100%ed twice. I 100%ed it once the first time when it first came out within a week. Because I was off the entire week from work and college. It was amazing. There is no doubt this is one of the best experiences you can ever play. Especially for 100%ing. Very smooth. Can't complain whatsoever. Not even a letter. Devil May Cry, I mean, in two live settings. I remember this. The problem is with Don't Make Cry was A, it's pretty short. B, it was a weird, clunky beat em up. I've never been a big fan of the series. I just got it randomly. I don't remember why I had it. But it's a little bit below average, in my opinion. I, two is very superior. For the first time, I'll say that sequel is better than the prequel. Rise. I remember when Rise first came out, I thought this game looked amazing, it was a great beat-em-up, and it was just a great overall top. Looking back at it, it looked fantastic, it was similar to like the Order of 1863 or whatever uh, the PS4 had at the time, and I mean, a beat on the hardest difficulty without really much of an issue, because beat-em-ups aren't that hard of a game, normally. So with that said, Rise, I'm going to put a below average as well, just because it, I mean, I said I was game of the year that one time, I didn't play many games that year. I remember saying that. Battle of Z was the worst of the Dragon Ball Z games I've played. Like, I had too much rage, I had so many issues with it, the controls sometimes had problems with it, it just wouldn't make sense to me. So we're gonna put it in below average as well as the last two other games. Dang, we're filling these A and C categories up now. Uh be right back. Well, you do some RPG, so let's go some RPG music. State of Truth was a fun, quirky RPG. Very easy for the most part. There was no really difficult problems with it. Um, that was the only problem. I did what I think was, how bad was it? 16 for an RPG, though, is very short. So, for the most part, very solid. It's, it will get the A from me, but as far as it'll go. Five is a 10 HD. Here's my problem, and it's what makes it difficult. I don't know where to put 10. 10, for the most part, is one of the best Final Fantasy games of all time. I would probably say 10 is the best one, in my opinion. But, as a favorite, of course, you know, 8 is my favorite. You know? I just don't... I wouldn't know where to put it, because...
difficulty wise, it's not that hard of a game. If you try to 100%, it is a lot more difficult because of all the side stuff you need to do the lightning strikes, the butterflies, the chocolate race, you know. Blitz uh, Ball is not superior to Triple Triad. Battle system is very. I feel like for the most part, 10 is not as good as 8. 10 stories better than 8. It's the only thing I can give it. But I'll probably say it'd probably still be a 9. Because so that would go up here for the most part. Tony Hawk American Wasteland. This is about what, where Tony Hawk started going downhill. But not. Um. Music was fantastic, even though another one of the listeners the same one song over, over and over again. But then again, we couldn't listen to the soundtrack because we had his copyright stuff. I've never been a big skateboarding fan. Three is the, three and four are the highlight to me of the Tony Hawk series. I think my Kawaii song was a little bit of a step down, though. Uh, Kawaii Dirt Storm is a game I need to finish. <laughs> We will eventually. To me, one of the best third-person co-op shooters there is. There ain't no doubt about it. I wish they would remake the series. Remaster it, or at least, you know, uh, make new ones. Be good. I mean, it's a difficult series. Actually, it's going to go up here. We need some more C's, don't we? We'll get there. Except, Windbag 2 shouldn't exist. Screw this game. This game was a huge step down. I don't know what happened. Get this crap out of here. You're an F. Alright. How Warriors goes to the same category as all my opinions of Legends of games. They're overrated. Yes, I said that. I don't think Zelda games are that good. I've tried them. I can't get into them. How Warriors was a Dynasty Warriors ripoff, basically, because it was. Or it was a bit of the same people, I think. It was okay. Probably the best Zelda game ever played. Well, but which doesn't say much. So I'm going to put Blue Arrow just because I don't like Zelda games. I tried. Outlast! Outlast was a fun little horror game. One of the scariest games of all time. I don't remember if there was any big issues with it, but I feel like it was above average for the most part. But, that's always fun. After I was in Metro, I was kind of disappointed in Metro. Metro's difficulty was weird at times. It would be really hard or very easy. Story was based off a book, which I couldn't quite remember Metro's story. I can remember a lot of these game stories, though, but on Metro, I don't remember. Um, but, for the most part, I feel like they could have done better with Metro. I'll eventually do the second one, but I feel like it's below average. Assassin's Creed! Okay. Years ago, I was challenged to do every single Assassin's Creed video game. We see how far that goes. We got the three. Will I ever do Revelations? Who knows? Find out tomorrow. Uh, but Assassin's Creed 1 is awful. Assassin's Creed 1 to me is very bad. I tried to enjoy it when I was a kid 10 years ago. I, tried, I replayed it when I did it like 2 or 3 or 4 years ago. And I'm still not into it. So for the most part, Assassin's Creed 1 is going to be an F. With that said, 2 was a huge improvement. I really enjoyed 2. I love the setting. Of, they did a lot of things better than what they used to. 2 is going straight to a B. Brotherhood is a, is a straight successor. Here's the problem I have with Brotherhood. They really didn't change much from 2 to Brotherhood. No way, that's wrong. Hold on, I'm wrong. I'm not thinking of that. Two, Brotherhood's good. Brotherhood had a lot of good things. It's about just as good as 2, if not a little bit better, but I feel like it's going to be right there. I'm sad it. Oh, Xenoverse. Xenoverse? Hold on.
So Xenoverse! Um, I forgot about this game existing. It wasn't that good. Just like Battle of Z. Like, I don't really remember it. But sucks about it. And so I put it back in the same category as Z, because like, if I thought that memorable, why would I play it? Where are my assets? That's weird. What did the S move? Uh, we already did the Brotherhood. So Persona Q. My first experience with the Persona game was pretty fun. Very emotional storyline. It actually got, I think it got me to cry once at the end. I wasn't ready for it. I mean, probably, I, it makes me want to play five, four, three, two, and one. So we'll put it A, because it's been really good. I like the soundtrack too. Headhunter! This is a game that I've always wanted to finish back when I, back in 2000s. I think Headhunter is a very fun to person shooter. Very different, very similar to like VR missions with a lot of things. So, I'm gonna give it a B. Because it was pretty average all along. Just a little short for the most part, right? 12 videos, that's very short, but you know, it's not bad. Alright, Tyranny. Tyranny is one of the few games that I have flat out cancelled. Because A, I couldn't have fun with it. To me, it was very it was a point and click RPG. Kinda hoped for the best. Story was okay. You do a lot of reading. I lost half the videos for it. It drove me nuts. But I'm gonna just put it in a C. Like for the most part, I couldn't get into it. I tried. I love Paradox games. If you see me out to put it on Europa, you would understand. Sticks in the Master Show, the first game I finished coming back to Let's Play. I've never seen a more frustrating experience for a stealth game. A lot of things were inconsistent. The mechanics were okay, but they were just inconsistent. Like, the story... I'm still confused what the story was about. I had the sequel, I'm never gonna play the sequel. Screw this game. Get your crap out of here. Screw all humans. And it was not a very solid experience. Very fun. I have no complaints about it. Like, pretty short for the most part, right? 15? Yeah, very short game. Even 6 was double the length and I hated it. So. Shadow Chanel, well, you're gonna go the same category as Scory Sticks. I couldn't get into you. You're a lot of reading, especially when an era with a lot of uh, voice acting was real. Game looked outdated even for its time. I don't even remember the story. And that drove me nuts. But I can't remember like, the story or anything about it. I feel like it's an automatic bad, you know? Uh, Manhunt's not where it should be. Manhunt was a really good, scary horror game. Like, can't complain about it. There's all the good things about Manhunt. And then there were five. Next one, this was actually, we're just playing from here on out. We don't need to worry about that. Resident Evil did a lot earlier where it should be. Resident Evil is like the god of other Resident Evil games. But it's still not that good of a game. Very short for the most part. I mean, how long was Resident Evil 1? Seven videos. Veronica X is so far uh, superior compared to it. I think it four. Spyro, I need to finish. Very fun platform for the most part. Can't really complain about it. Red Dead Redemption 2 is a masterpiece. The story is one of the best stories I've ever played in a game. Very great character development. Great gameplay. 100%ing was not fun at all. But, game itself, I would still say completed at least once. If I play it again, I'm not playing any of the 100% unless I absolutely want to commit suicide again. Longest LP by far, but, but then there was two. Alright. Rage 2 was an utter disappointment. 
I could have been a lot better, could have been a lot worse, but for the most part, I'm going to go away music for a run out. We don't need it. For the most part, Rage 2 is going to be a C. It was below average, every sense of the word, and it could have been a whole lot better. Last but not least, Bioshock. Look, if you would have told me before I replayed it, I would have put it as a C or an F. I never was a huge fan of Bioshock. I tried to get into it. I was told it was one of the best games ever. I played it. I was extremely disappointed into it. If you want to play me, tell me to play something, don't tell me it's the best game ever. Just tell me I would like it. If you tell me it's the best thing ever, I'm going to give it high expectations. It's going to suck. The only game that I feel like that I can't counter that with that sucked to me, regardless if I liked it or not, would be Portal. Portal's awful. Bioshock's a very solid game. I don't think it's above average. It's pretty short still. Bioshock was what? 15 videos, which wasn't long at all. You know, but for the most part, this is about what I want. A very average list. You know, I'm actually working on 67 right now, which will probably go somewhere on here. Uh, Kenny Kondola, which will go somewhere on here as well, because that's what it's supposed to do. But well, the goal is, like, every 10 videos, we'll go ahead and do more of these. That way, you know, we can have fun, talk about it a little bit more in depth. But, do you see anything you think would be a major thing, in your opinion, that shouldn't be there? Let me know. I'm curious. Because I guarantee the biggest one I see all people complain about is probably where I put, like, Metro or Bioshock. Day of is probably one people are like, what? An S? But guys, next time we're back to the game, you're going to get more Deliverance. And enter your new game. I may have already spoiled what it was. I'll see you then.